Hello everyone, I'm back with another book review and this is a must-have book for your library if you do anything at all with any type of tool steel. We have Heat Treatment, Selection, and Application of Tool Steels by Bill Bryson. I'm guessing this is not the same author as A Walk in the Woods and many other great travel books, but who knows. Uh, this is published by Hansard Gardner for Modern Machine Shop Publications. This particular edition is the first one from 1997, but there is a second edition that's out now I don't actually own, but I'll put an Amazon affiliate link to it down in the description. Let's take a look at what this book has to offer. First of all, right on the front inside cover, we have a very comprehensive conversion chart from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Knowing your different temperatures is absolutely essential when you're dealing with heat treatment, and you don't want to get confused between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Chapter 1 talks about what makes steel steel. Uh, this discusses the different grades as well as their codes. For instance, 1018, uh, that's mild steel, and the 10 in the number means that it's a plain carbon steel, that's the only alloying element, and the 18 in the number means that it has 0.18% carbon. That means it's a pretty low carbon steel. There's also a chart here that shows the effect of various alloying elements on the steel. Chapter two talks briefly about what's actually happening during the heat treatment process. And chapter three covers furnaces, temperature controllers, pyrometers, the various quenching mediums, and all sorts of other tools for the job. Chapter four is really important. Uh, this covers different ways of protecting the surface of your parts during heat treatment and preventing or minimizing decarburization and scaling. Decarburization is actually when the steel loses carbon from the surface and that actually affects the hardness of the part. There are several ways that you could handle this. You could easily leave extra material that can be ground off, and that's what most home shop people do. It's very accessible. And honestly, you should be doing that anyway because parts tend to warp and move around, especially if you have thin sections next to thick sections. You could also use an oxygen-free atmosphere in your furnace if you have one. Uh, obviously, if you don't have one, you can ignore that, but if your furnace is equipped, you can put an inert gas in there, or you could potentially just pull all the air out so there's no oxygen around to cause oxides. Uh, you could also try wrapping the part in stainless foil, and if you ever watch any knife making videos, you've probably seen this process. The stainless foil just means that there's less atmosphere around the part. Um, uh, this is not a great choice for oil or water quenching steels because you can't adequately quench them while they're in the foil and it's very difficult to unwrap them in a timely manner while they're at the critical temperature. Lastly, they have a series of protective paints that you could put on your part to help keep scaling down. Chapters 5 through 13 actually give you specific recipes for common tool steels. Uh, it starts out with D2, and this chapter is actually thicker than the others because this talks about uh, various principles that are common to heat treating any alloy. So it's a little bit longer than the other chapters because it wasn't necessary to repeat all that information and all the others. After D2, we have a chapter on A2, which is an air hardening steel, A6, which is another air hardening steel, H13, which is a fantastic steel for any kind of hot work. If you're making tooling for cutting off hot pieces of steel, use some H13. Blacksmiths use this all the time to uh, make cut off tools and chisels and things that they're going to be using while the workpiece is hot. S7 is another fantastic tool steel to know. Uh, this is a shockproof steel and it's used for things that are going to take impact, like uh, chisels and jackhammer bits, things like that. We have a chapter on M2 high speed steel. Then we have 4140, which is everyone's favorite steel, or at least mine. 
I use 4140 quite a lot. If you've seen any of my tool making videos, I was using 01 on pretty much all of those, anything that I've done uh, hardening on. Uh, it's a very, very forgiving steel if you don't have a lot of heat treating tools. So that's a great chapter for me. Likewise, W1 is also a pretty forgiving steel. Uh, that's a water hardening steel, by the way. The next chapter goes over cryogenics, and cryogenics is actually, uh, you can send your parts off that have been hardened to get cryogenically treated, um, or you can try to do it at home too. This, uh, this chapter covers a few homebrew solutions, um, but cryogenic treatment helps to uh, convert more of the austenite crystals to martensite crystals. Those are the two main forms that steel might take as far as the grain structure goes during heat treatment. Austenite is a very large and irregular crystal structure, while martensite is much finer, and that's what you're actually looking for in a tough, hardened steel. We close out the books with chapters on grinding uh, hardened tool steel parts and the various uh, things that might go on with that specifically overheating it you want to avoid that um, there's good design practices this talks about designing parts that are going to be heat treated uh, so avoiding things like stress risers overly thin sections uh, techniques that you can use when you're uh, dealing with a thin section next to a thick section stuff like that um, then we have welding tool steels um, you have to really be careful when you're welding tool steels because that introduces heat locally and that can cause a lot of stresses. And a lot of tool steels, especially dies, have to get welded up to repair them. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a, an important chapter as well. We have the effects of EDM. If you don't know what EDM means, it stands for electric discharge machining. And there are two main types. You have the sinker EDM, which uses a shaped electrode, and it can be made out of uh, graphite, copper, all sorts of stuff. Um, that electrode, the part is actually held in an electrolyte, and the EDM is brought down to it, and there's a little spark that happens between the electrode and the material, and it erodes away the material. So you can burn through a piece of hardened steel. The other type of EDM, which is a little bit more common, is wire EDM. It basically acts like a bandsaw, uh, but you have a very, very thin wire that will cut through the part. EDM is used a ton in tool and die work. And of course you are actually burning away the surface of the steel, so it probably doesn't have much effect, but it's going to have something. We have a very thick chapter, about 30 pages or so, of tool steel selections. Uh, so this talks about how to choose the right tool steel for the job. And there's a bunch of different charts in here that you can look at uh, that help you make a decision on that particular front. And the book closes out with helpful hints and tidbits. There are a ton of things in here. Uh, a lot of charts actually on other types of steels that uh, are not covered elsewhere in the book. So there's a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, way too much to go over just in a brief um, uh, discussion of it, but it talks about the chemical elements that are inside as well as the various temperatures to get different Rockwell hardnesses. Overall, this is a fantastic book and I think anyone should have this on their library if they're planning on doing heat treatment of any kind, even with a torch, uh, or even if you're thinking about getting into it. Check this book out. It's pretty reasonably priced, and you really can't go wrong with it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.